Hey friends, we're continuing through the New Testament together. Thanks for joining me on this journey. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 today. And Paul, in writing this, this second letter we have from him to the church in Corinth, it, it has a lot of Christology in it. It's got this theological understanding about Jesus and about what Christ brings to us, about death and life and the eternity and all of these kind of things built into this letter that make it incredible to study together. It's deeper, but allows us to draw some things from it that uh, maybe had not been revealed in the past to the Jews and certainly something that is fun to study now. In this, in this third chapter, he gets into the glory of the original uh, Moses and the Ten Commandments and the law and that model versus the new model that we have in Jesus Christ in the new covenant. It's a comparison of the two covenants. Now, remember, when Adam was created in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, he was formed in the image of God. Now, that doesn't mean his body was matched the image of God's body, but it, it meant if he wanted to understand who God was, all he had to do was look inside because the character of God was already invested in him. The love of God, you talk about perfection, he was living out the love of God in the way he lived his life. And he was demonstrating the joy and the uh, work ethic and the care and the, the nurturing spirit with his wife, Eve, and all of that. All of that was built into him as a part of who he was. But then he made the choice in Genesis 3 of the tree of knowledge of good and evil instead of the tree of life. He, he chose to listen to the voice of Satan instead of the voice of God, and he lost that image. And ever since then, if you know the story, all the way up to Moses, they were struggling with this. There was punishment, and, and God was trying to call out uh, Abraham and create a people for himself that would recapture that image. Well, that image couldn't be something you grow from within. It had to be given to you from outside, and that's why the Ten Commandments. And he even talks about that in this passage, how the glory of God shows up on the mountain outside of Moses and the people. The glory of God is revealed through the obedience of the Ten Commandments. He loved them, and he gave them these commands as a way for them to live out a life that loves God back. But even that doesn't change our lives. And so the glory would come on Moses. He put a veil to cover it so the people could actually see it because it was so glorious. The holiness of God was more than people could handle. And they would put a veil over Moses' face. That's what this whole chapter discusses. And then <clears throat> Paul makes the point, but it's different now with the Holy Spirit. It's different now with the new covenant. Instead of the glory being thrown on you and then it fades, you have the glory of God now in you with the new covenant. Because of the cross, because of God's forgiveness through Jesus on the cross, you are now being transformed from within back to the original image of God. Hallelujah. And then it gets to my verse, First, Second Corinthians 3.18, and we are being transformed into the image with ever increasing glory. How powerful is that? So what Paul is describing to us is this transformation process comes from within and changes what people see on the outside. He goes on to describe that, and we all with unveiled faces <clears throat> are being transformed in the image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. He says, you should be walking in ever-increasing glory, demonstrating to people the more you get transformed, the more you become like Jesus, the more they see Jesus through you. That is the walk of the new covenant. That's why they will know us by our love for one another, because the more we love like Jesus, the more Jesus shines through us to everybody around us. They can't deny it. That's why the more obedient we are to God, it's not that works get us into heaven, but the more obedient we are, the more they see Jesus living his life through us, and we living like Jesus would live if he were in us. And by doing so, they see more of Jesus and the glory of God is on them. It's interesting <clears throat> how the reaction of those who reject God in Christ is the same as those when Moses had the glory on him. 
But we don't need a veil to cover ourselves. We need to reveal that glory more and more as we live for Jesus, follow his word, and let his transformation change us and reveal himself to the world around us. Hallelujah. <laughs> I encourage you to let that transformation happen. And listen, that is the rest of your life as it is mine, is to allow the transformation of his love to change us into who he designed us to be. The more you do that, the more it witnesses to everybody around you. God bless you as you do. We'll see you again next time as we continue on in this study.